All right. So today uh, we're going to be diving deep into the world of pumps. Okay. Specifically, we're tackling split case versus end suction pumps. Mm -hmm. Two uh, real workhorses of fluid movement, but, you know, with uh, distinct personalities. Yeah, for sure. You know, I was reading an article the other day about a, a massive water treatment plant upgrade, and they opted for split case pumps. Interesting. It got me thinking, like, right. what makes these pumps so special? Right. And more importantly, how can you, the listener, you know, make the right pump choice for your needs? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. It's uh, not always as straightforward as it might seem. Right. Picking the wrong pump can lead to, oh, you know, think about inefficiencies. Sure. Yeah. Skyrocketing costs. Yeah. Even potential damage. Okay, so let's break it down. Yeah. For those who aren't familiar, imagine a pump that opens up like a treasure chest. Okay. That's your split case pump. Yeah. Easy access to all the inner workings. Mm. And suction pumps, on the other hand, are more like a streamlined tube. Right. Compact. Efficient. Those design differences are really at the heart of their performance strengths. Okay. The split case, with its horizontally split casing, makes maintenance a breeze. Oh, okay. You can get to those components. Right. Without disconnecting everything. Gotcha. And the impeller, the core of the pump, is supported on both sides <laughs> for extra stability. So split case pumps are like the heavy duty trucks of the pump world. Exactly. Built for the long haul. Built for the long haul. Right. Okay. And that robust design translates to some serious advantages. Okay. Split case pumps are known for their impressive efficiency, <laughs> often exceeding 85%. Wow. That means lower energy bills. All right. Which is Always a win. Always a win. Plus, they're incredibly stable with minimal vibration, okay. leading to a longer lifespan. Now, that's what I call a sustainable choice. Yeah. Less energy use, Excellent. less wear and tear. For sure. But where do end suction pumps fit into all of this? Yeah. Their impeller design is a bit different, right? It is. It's supported on only one side. That's right. It's called an overhung design. Okay. Um, think of it like a cantilever. Okay. A beam fixed at one end. Yeah. And supporting a load at the other. Gotcha. This design makes end suction pumps compact mm -hmm. and generally easier to install. Okay. Especially in tighter spaces. So they're like the agile sprinters of the pump world. Precisely. Quite efficient. Adapt right. Adaptable. Right. And while they might not have the same heavy duty reputation as split case pumps, wow. they shine in versatility okay. and affordability. Uh, they're a great option for a wide range of applications, mm -hmm. especially those with smaller footprints okay. and budget constraints. Okay. So we've got these two distinct pump personalities. Yeah. But how do we know which one is right for our specific needs? Right. Is it all about size and budget? Those are definitely important factors. Okay. But there's um, yeah. There's more to it than that. First, you've got to consider the flow rate right. and pressure. Okay. How much fluid needs to be moved mm -hmm. and at what force. Gotcha. Split case pumps are typically the go-to for flows over 500 gallons per minute. Okay. And high-pressure situations, mm -hmm. they're the muscle you need for moving large volumes of liquid Right. Quickly yeah. and efficiently. Okay. Think municipal water systems Okay. or large industrial processes. So if I'm running a small farm and need to irrigate my fields, right. a split case pump might be overkill. Exactly. Okay. An end awesome. suction pump would likely be a better fit in that scenario. Right. They're well suited for flows under 500 gallons per minute. Okay. And moderate pressure demands. Got it. Flow rate and pressure key considerations. Yeah. What else should we be thinking about? when choosing between these two pump types. Another crucial factor is the installation environment. Right. And space constraints. Okay. Split case pumps, with their robust construction, often require a more substantial foundation. Gotcha. And more space for access and maintenance. Okay. And suction pumps, on the other hand, are much more compact mm -hmm. and easier to fit into tighter spaces. So it's not just about what the pump can do, right. but where it's going to live. Right. Exactly. A cramped mechanical room might favor an end suction pump, yeah. even if a split case could handle the flow and pressure requirement. That's a great point. Okay. And then there's yeah. the long-term cost perspective. Okay. Split case pumps often have a higher initial cost. Right. But their durability and lower wear rate can lead to significant savings over time. Okay. They require less frequent maintenance. Mm -hmm. And typically have a longer lifespan. So even though they might be more expensive up front, yeah. they could end up saving you money in the long run. Precisely. Okay. It's like investing in a high-quality appliance. Right. 
It might cost more initially. Sure. But it lasts longer and requires fewer repairs. Okay. Ultimately saving you money and headaches. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So we've got flow rate, mm -hmm. pressure, yeah. installation space. Right. And long-term costs. Mm -hmm. Are we missing anything? We've covered the major points. Okay. But there are some yeah. there are some nuanced factors that can play a significant role in pump selection. Okay. Things like the type of fluid being pumped, right. temperature considerations, oh. and the potential environmental impact. Now, that's what I call getting into the nitty-gritty. Yeah. I'm really curious to hear more about these nuanced factors. Sure. But before we dive into that, yeah. let's take a quick pause to recap what we've learned so far. Sounds good. Welcome back to our deep dive into the world of pumps. Yeah, so... We've... Uh, We've laid the groundwork, mm. exploring the key differences between split case and end suction pumps, right. their design strengths, yeah. mm -hmm. and those all important selection criteria. We've talked flow rates, right. pressure, yeah. installation, oh. even those long-term cost considerations. Absolutely. But you know, I always find that real world examples, yeah. they really bring things to life. Absolutely. It's one thing to talk about pump theory right but it's another to see how these pumps actually perform yeah. in different scenarios for sure oh. theory and practice often go hand in hand yeah so let's shift gears and explore some case studies okay that showcase these pumps in action i love this part hit me with your first case study okay so let's start with a scenario that highlights the reliability and efficiency of split case pumps oh, okay a municipal water distribution system right. in a rapidly growing city. Okay. Imagine a system mm -hmm. responsible for delivering clean water to thousands of homes and businesses. Right. Any disruption in service would have a significant impact Ooh, yeah. on the entire community. No pressure, right. Right. Clean water is essential, so reliability must be a top priority in that situation. You're absolutely right. Yeah. When this city needed to upgrade their aging pumping station, they opted for split case pumps. Okay. And for good reason. All right. Their high efficiency ratings meant lower energy consumption mm -hmm. and reduced operating costs over the long term. I can see how that would be a major factor for a city. Yeah. Managing a large, complex water system. It was. Okay. And remember that easy access for maintenance we talked about? Oh, yeah. That was another big plus for the city. Right. Split case pumps allow for quick inspections and repairs. Gotcha. Minimizing downtime. Yeah. And ensuring a continuous supply of water right to the community it's like having a built-in insurance policy against those dreaded service interruptions yeah for okay sure. so split case pumps are a great fit for large-scale municipal water systems mm -hmm. what about industrial applications let's move to a chemical processing plant that needed a pump okay to handle highly corrosive fluids wow a mm -hmm. challenge yeah they could eat away at a standard pump in no time that sounds intense. Corrosion can wreak havoc on equipment, leading to costly repairs and replacements. Exactly. Yeah. The plant engineers needed a pump that could withstand this harsh environment. Right. So they chose a split case pump constructed from specialized corrosion resistant materials. So even though split case pumps might have a higher upfront cost, right. their durability and resistance to corrosion made them the more cost-effective choice for this particular situation. Precisely. Okay. They minimize the risk of premature failure mm -hmm. and those costly replacements. Right. Plus, the split case design allowed for easy inspection and maintenance okay. of those critical components. Right. Ensuring the pump's continued performance yeah. in that demanding environment. Okay, so we've seen split case pumps shining in both municipal water systems and heavy-duty industrial applications. Mm. What about a scenario where an end suction pump might be the better choice? Let's shift gears to a smaller scale. Okay. A family-owned farm right. that needed to irrigate their fields. Okay. They had a limited budget and didn't need the massive flow rates yeah. of those larger systems we just discussed. So in this case, the affordability and ease of installation of an end suction pump would be major advantages. Absolutely. Okay. And their versatility meant that the farm could use the same pump for other tasks around the property, okay, like filling water tanks for livestock yeah. or even running a small pressure washer. It's like having a multi-purpose tool in your pump shed. Right. Okay, so we've seen some real-world examples uh -huh. of how split case and end suction pumps perform in different settings. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, is it always a clear-cut choice between these two types? That's a great question. Yeah. And it highlights an important point. Okay. 
sometimes the lines can blur. Right. There might be situations where an end suction pump could handle the job adequately. Okay. Even though a split case pump might be considered the traditional choice. So it's not always about sticking to rigid categories. Right. It's about understanding the nuances of each pump type and finding the best fit for the specific needs of the situation. Exactly. Okay. And that's where those nuance factors we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Fluid properties, mm -hmm. temperature, right. and environmental impact yeah. come into play. Okay, let's unpack those nuance factors. Sir. I'm all yours. Let's start with fluid properties. Okay. Pumping water is different from pumping oil or a thick slurry. Right. The viscosity okay. or thickness of the fluid can significantly impact pump performance. So a pump designed for water might not be the best choice for handling a thick, viscous liquid like molasses. Exactly. Okay. And then there's temperature. Right. Pumping extremely hot or cold fluids yeah. can impact the materials used in the pump's construction. Okay. And even its overall efficiency. So if I'm dealing with molten chocolate, for example, yeah. I'd need a pump designed to handle those high temperatures. Precisely. Okay. And finally, yeah. we can't forget about the environmental impact. Choosing a more energy efficient pump can significantly reduce your carbon footprint. That's a really important consideration, yeah. especially as sustainability becomes increasingly important across all industries. It is. Yeah. And there might be regulations or industry standards that dictate certain pump types yeah. okay. based on the fluids being handled mm -hmm. and the potential for environmental contamination. So it's not just about choosing the right pump for the job. Right. It's about choosing the right pump for the planet. Exactly. Okay. These nuanced factors add another layer of complexity to pump selection. Right. And this is where consulting with experts like pump manufacturers or engineers yeah. can be invaluable. Okay. They can help you navigate these complexities mm -hmm. and make informed decisions based on your specific needs and constraints. It sounds like pump selection is a bit like detective work. Uh -huh. Gathering clues. Yeah. Analyzing the evidence. Right. And making the right call based on all the available information. For sure. But before we delve further into that decision-making process, yeah. let's take another quick pause. Okay. And reflect on what we've learned. Welcome back. Uh, We've uh, journeyed through this fascinating world of pumps, yeah. exploring their designs, their strengths, right. and all those crucial factors that guide our choices. Absolutely. We even delved into real-world case studies, yeah. showcasing split case and end suction pumps in action. We did. But, you know, Absolutely. even the most perfectly chosen pump right. needs a little TLC. Yeah to stay in top shape. Absolutely. It's like that saying, yeah. an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Exactly. Right. That's a great analogy. Yeah. And it perfectly highlights the importance of pump maintenance. Right. Pumps are the workhorses of fluid movement, mm -hmm. but they're not invincible. Sure. Regular maintenance is crucial yeah. to ensure their longevity, mm -hmm. efficiency, and reliability. So let's break down yeah. some essential pump maintenance practices. Split case pumps with their easy access design. Right seem like they'd be relatively straightforward to maintain they are okay remember that treasure chest analogy oh yeah that easy access to internal components right makes routine inspections and yeah. maintenance a breeze okay you can open the casing mm -hmm. inspect the impeller right check the bearings and seals okay all without disconnecting the entire system so it's like having a built-in inspection window for your pump it is okay what kind of maintenance tasks are we talking about specifically? Yeah, regular lubrication is key. Okay. Keeping those bearings properly greased yeah. reduces friction. Okay. Preventing premature wear and tear. Right. It's a simple task, mm -hmm. but makes a huge difference okay. in the pump's lifespan. It's like giving your pump a regular oil change. Exactly. Simple but essential. Absolutely. Okay, what else should we be checking yeah. during those routine inspections? Well, the seals are another critical component. Okay. They prevent leaks right. and maintain the pump's efficiency. Mm -hmm. Inspecting them regularly okay. for any signs of wear or damage right. is crucial. A leaky pump is not only inefficient, but can also create safety hazards. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Depending on the fluid being pumped, right. leaks can pose environmental risks mm -hmm. or even create slippery surfaces. Okay. And don't forget about those pesky clogs. Oh, right. Clogs. Yeah. Those are never fun. No, they're not. Especially if they bring the whole system to a grinding halt. Exactly. Yeah. Depending on the fluid being pumped, right. you might need to flush the system periodically okay. to prevent 
buildup mm -hmm. or corrosion. Right. This helps to maintain optimal flow. Okay. And prevent unexpected downtime. So it's not just about fixing things when they break. Right. It's about proactive maintenance. Absolutely. To prevent problems from happening in the first place. Exactly. Uh, right. Regular inspections. Yeah. Lubrication. Mm -hmm. Seal checks. Right. And flushing can yeah. significantly extend the life of your split case pump huh. and prevent costly repairs. Okay. Now, what about end suction pumps? Right. While they might not have that easy split case access, yeah. they still require regular attention oh, to yeah. stay in tip top shape. So what are the key things to keep in mind for end suction pump maintenance? Since the impeller is overhung okay. in an end suction pump, mm -hmm. It's especially important to monitor for vibration. Okay. Excessive vibration can be a red flag. Gotcha. Indicating potential problems no. with the bearings or shaft alignment. And those vibrations can lead to all sorts of issues, right? Yeah, they can. Premature wear. Absolutely. Damage to components. Uh huh. Even catastrophic failure if left unchecked. Exactly. Wow. Okay. So regular vibration monitoring is key. Okay. You can use specialized vibration sensors. Right. Or even just a simple hand check. Okay. To feel for excessive vibration. Gotcha. And just like with split case pumps, yeah. those seals are critical. They are. They seem to be the unsung heroes of pump maintenance. They really are. Yeah. They prevent leakage mm -hmm. and protect the bearings from contamination. Right. Inspect them regularly okay. and replace them as needed mm -hmm. to ensure the pumps continued efficiency and reliability. Got it. Don't forget about good record keeping, too. Oh, that's important. Yeah. Documentation. It's yeah. like having a detailed health history yeah. for your pump. Okay. Documenting maintenance tasks. Yeah. Inspection findings. Mm -hmm. And any repairs right. will help you track the pump's history. Okay. And identify potential issues early on. Yeah. A valuable tool yeah. for proactive maintenance right. and troubleshooting. Speaking of troubleshooting, yeah. we've covered a lot of ground on maintenance. We have. But what about those unexpected issues that pop up? Right. What are some common red flags that signal trouble with a pump. Well, keep an ear out for unusual noises. Okay. Coming from the pump. Gotcha. Any grinding, screeching, or knocking sounds yep. could indicate bearing problems okay. or other mechanical issues. So if my pump starts sounding like a heavy metal concert, uh, it's probably time to call in the experts. Exactly. Okay. Another red flag yeah. is a decrease in flow rate right. or pressure. Okay. This could indicate a clog, mm -hmm. a problem with the impeller, yeah. or even a worn out seal. So paying attention to the pump's performance right. and being attuned to any changes in sound or output is crucial. It is. Okay. And never hesitate to consult the pump's manual. Right. Or seek guidance from qualified professionals. Yeah. If you're unsure about any maintenance procedure mm -hmm. or troubleshooting steps. It's always better to err on the side of caution. Yes, definitely. And seek expert advice when needed. Absolutely. Well, I think we've thoroughly explored the world of pumps. I think so, too. From their inner workings mm -hmm. to their real-world applications. Right. And now to the essential practices that keep them running smoothly. Exactly. We've empowered you with the knowledge. We have. To choose the right pump. Right. Maintain it effectively mm -hmm. and troubleshoot those unexpected hiccups along the way. Yeah, that's right. So remember, whether you're managing a municipal water system or simply tending to your backyard garden, mm. understanding the nuances of pumps Absolutely. can make all the difference yeah. in efficiency, mm -hmm. cost savings, yeah. and overall peace of mind. Definitely. And as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. remember that the world of pumps is constantly evolving. It is. New technologies, materials, and applications mm -hmm. are emerging all the time. Right. So stay curious, yeah. keep learning, For and several. don't be afraid to ask questions. Absolutely. After no. all the more you know about pumps, yeah. the better equipped you'll be to make informed decisions uh -huh. and keep those fluids flowing smoothly. Exactly. That's a wrap on our deep dive. <laughs> into the world of split case versus end suction pumps. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. And until next time. Until next time. Keep exploring. Keep exploring.